What is being monitored? So first it's about MRV, MRV, so it's measurement, reporting and verification. In the, it can be monitoring for anything, but in the context of RED is how can we develop a tool um, to monitor the implementation of RED uh, at national level. And that includes carbon, of course, also carbon emission or carbon stock. Uh, but also non-carbon data more and more, so which means understanding the drivers of change, so why is what is behind the numbers, uh, but also including into that uh, all aspects related to social safeguards and to co-benefits, whether environmental or social. So it becomes a big bunch of activities which is being uh, monitored and, and, and followed within MRV. So monitoring is important. When we have a project, an activity, uh, we want to know whether we address the, the goals, uh, the target. And doing MRV is doing exactly that. So it's understanding whether Red Press has been successful, what went well, what went wrong, and how can we fix uh, that. Um, then participatory MRV is a bit is a bit uh, adding a layer uh, to it, which is involving local communities in, into that particular monitoring. And not only in the monitoring aspect, but in what we are doing with the data. Uh, so it's not about just monitoring uh, carbon emission, for example, uh, but it's also what are we doing with this data, to whom we are reporting it, and what will be the role of local communities in that and also in uh, validation or verification. So how can we control whether um, the information provided to a higher governance level is, uh, is valid. So it means uh, engaging local communities in that process of MRV. And uh, if we look at what has been uh, studied uh, until until now, as the engagement of local communities is really focused on the measurement aspects, so how to um, to build capacity of local communities to measure tree diameter, tree height, and to provide uh, information on carbon stock uh, and the cost of it, so cost effectiveness of this kind of uh, activity. However, we think uh, in this project that we need also to consider the involvement of local communities or participation of communities in the other aspects, which is this reporting and validation uh, aspects. So that, that should be also a target of um, the research, to not only understand the measurement part, but how local communities can, uh, how can they uh, provide the information to uh, the national um, carbon database, for example, um, and how can they help to validate or to add information to the validation or verification which is being made on uh, the carbon emission that have been reported to IPCC, etc., UNFCCC. So, that's, that's the main question of our research and we are still trying to answer it. So why? My question is why and under which condition would local community participate to something, an activity which is completely alien to any of their livelihood daily activities? Uh, under what condition? Uh, what would be the incentive? So this is a set of questions we are asking and we are still trying to understand. Uh, and how can it be sustainable? We can imagine that a project will pay for local people, so provide a financial incentive to um, participate. Yes, sure, why not? Uh, but once the project stops and the source of funding stops, then we don't know why local communities should continue, unless there is something behind. So this is what we are trying to explore. Um, would um, some kind of, of forest management scheme be a good framework to embed participatory MRV and to use the result of, of that to empower local communities, to make them uh, participate to the decisions made regarding that, that particular forest. 
So that, that's a question we have. But it's only not only the, it's not the only one. We also look at the, um, the availability of local communities. When are they free time? When is the best time to involve them in, in measurement and in all these activities? Uh, their willingness, do they want to do it or not? Uh, the, the also their, um, uh, their skills and education, so because uh, collecting this information and making them in a shape that can be reported and forwarded to uh, a higher government level and it requests uh, skills, so this also we need to check. So there is a number of conditions that we are exploring in the different uh, sites where we are working in Indonesia and we, we try to compare how people uh, answer to that. But the idea behind is really to understand the conditions under which participatory MRV is feasible and sustainable. So I could not tell you now what they can get from it because I think each situation is different. Uh, we work in seven communities in, across Indonesia in three different sites and with a different uh, gradient of uh, demography, forest uh, cover and uh, access to infrastructure to market is there within these this different sites. And uh, each situation is unique, so we really need to take into account the information we get from each of them before saying these are the conditions under which it could work or it could not. And in our project we don't try to um, um, to, uh, to say that participatory MRV is going to work at any case and we just need to find the conditions, but we just explore whether it's possible or not and, and if it is and under what condition. And one result can be in the end that it's not going to work unless we involve much more experts or technical staff. Maybe participatory reporting or participatory validation is not feasible, so why? And uh, that, that are questions that we are asking. So, I think uh, if we consider MRV in general, uh, we need a bit uh, of both. And uh, yes, uh, the technical advancement, the, the level of uh, resolution, of precision we can get from remote sensing uh, is amazing. And we, we can even see the, the trees uh, in the forest. So it's very helpful, but there are information that we cannot get using these methods and this high tech unless we go to a field, we go to a village, we talk to people and we try to understand why and what happened here and why is it like this and what are all the, the changes in the forest cover that communities can explain to us because they are there. So it's not enough and so this, there must be um, there must be a balance between the use of high-tech uh, as a lot of people are doing in, uh, in red and in, in MRV and the, the deep understanding of a local situation that only local communities can have. So trying to make this too much uh, is, is really exciting and interesting. Maybe something else about the high tech. Um, it, it's also how can local communities use high tech. So some authors, some scientists have proposed that local communities use uh, PDA or handphone to report results to, to NGOs who would forward it uh, upward. Uh, that can work in some situations where the phone network is very good, where there is free G, etc. But there are areas uh, where it's impossible, so then we need to find other ways to, to do this and high-tech is not the, the solution all the time. So again, it's a balance and trying to take into account the different situation, which each of them being unique. And understanding that should be a first step to any Red Plus MRV project or activity. Well, I think the the key message is whatever we do related to red should be as bottom up as possible. We cannot uh, we cannot really implement a red 
initiative, the right project, activities to mitigate uh, climate change by making decisions at very high level and implementing them at, at subnational levels without engaging with local communities. So whether local communities are engaged, are, are participating to all the aspects, MRV or other aspects of RED. Uh, so that's something that needs to be explored, but uh, it cannot work if, if they are not part of a, of a solution and, and not just, they are not just elements that need to be, uh, which awareness need to be built, but they can be also part of the decisions and on the solutions, uh, of the solutions that we are looking for. We developed this website to share uh, our approach, our methods, uh, but also some of our results. We have um, so the different uh, activities uh, which are really deep, uh, presented uh, detailed in a, in a detailed way. Uh, we have the three different um, teams working on more of the social aspects of participatory MRV, the governance aspect and uh, the more biophysical remote sensing aspects. So all activities are detailed with the kind of uh, methods and tools that we are using. Uh, so we are trying also to have a platform to share our results with our uh, publications. There is also a web page on that, small films uh, which are snapshots from uh, each of the field sites to show a bit how local communities uh, live in, in these areas. Um, and also what is going on with our projects, so the different um, presentations we are doing, everything is available online and the pictures from the field. So it's becoming quite an important tool to disseminate uh, and to, to share with uh, all the community working on these participatory approaches. Not only MRV, but also all participatory monitoring and uh, community-based forest management, etc. So I think they will have uh, real interest in, in, in getting the information we are sharing. And hopefully this website will grow yeah, inside in the coming months.